Uh, I have a quick suggestion, um, brothers. Dave, just to tie it up, I find it really interesting that we're still in the ice age, so to speak, but, you know, y'all willing, well, uh, all the answers will be revealed to us in due time, you know, as far as the sun melting the ice and whatnot. I have a suggestion um, because one of the things that, or I should say the most grounding thing for me, and it was a very humbling experience that Yah guided me towards that, that concretely let me know that Yah is real, as opposed to just believing in him before. And I'm sure each of us had one of those epiphanies. And I think it'd be very beneficial if we all just gave iterations of our story and how we came upon the truth, so to speak, which is Yah. Um, and I guess since I suggested it, I'll start with myself. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, in 2016, I was purchasing a car from a dealership and uh, there is an evangelist Christian over there telling me about how JC is God, Lord of Lords and whatnot. And uh, while he was telling me this, he dropped in, oh yeah, by the way, the earth is flat. And I looked over at my, my family and I'm like, all right, guys, it's time to get out of here. Like, this guy's losing it. So uh, didn't revisit the topic for an entire year. And there were celebrities like Shaquille O'Neal and Kyrie Irving coming on to the, the news and they were talking about how the earth is flat and we can lie to yada, yada, yada. So I was intrigued by this because I, you know, we, most people look up to celebrities like this. And I, I thought, why not objectively delve into uh, this topic? So from there, a few things became evident, like the moon landing being faked, and a bunch of other conspiracies. I actually stumbled upon one of Dave's videos at the time uh, when he was on the Milenko show, the late night show. And to keep a long story short, all this brought me into the book of remembrance because that was what mirrored a reality that had become apparent to me, whereby through all the research I was doing, I could no longer defend what I was educated about with regards to the world that we live in. And one bone of contention was, okay, I know for certain they're lying about the earth spinning and planets and whatnot, but is JC indeed the son of God? And this is where I was at. This was the next big thing I had to, uh, to overcome. So I prayed to Yah for guidance. And um, I actually came upon your channel, Brother Lee. And I think the video that did it for me was definitely Emmanuel because it's one thing to omit information. It's another thing to catch someone red-handed when they're altering the information to fit a narrative. So when I saw how they were trying to blend in the prophecy of a virgin with the so-called virgin Mother Mary, Mother of JC, then I was like, aha, I can see what they're doing here. They're plagiarizing it and manufacturing the story to lend credence to it. So that's how Flat Earth tied into my understanding of Yah, where now I tell people I don't believe in the Most High. I know he's real. And there's a difference between having knowledge and belief. So, yeah, that's my story. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, led me to, to you, brothers, and I'm, I'm just extremely grateful. I think this is very beneficial. And major props to you, Brother Henry, yeah. you know, for organizing this and putting it together. And even selecting the topics, because I like how you started off with flat earth and creation and you're going in a, in a chronological order for people to follow where it's a story that makes sense and they can kind of see the path that's been laid out by Yah for us all praise to the most high praise to the most high i'd, li I'd like to, i'd like just to, to just ask a question about the sabbath um i know a lot of people eat during the sabbath and we're but isn't the sabbath a time for fasting isn't his, isn't that a time actually for fasting during that during that period or is it a, I, I know it's it's a time of reflection and but is it not the time to actually fast in, in during that 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 period you Every can but you don't have to uh sometimes i will fast the entire 24 hours a dry fast no food no drink uh so it's not instructed that you have to fast during the Sabbath, but you can, uh, especially if you find that your home may be uh, afflicted. Uh, if any difficulties arise within your life, uh, 
it is good to, to uh, command the fast in your house, have your entire family fast while you turn to the most high uh, and pretty much admit your faults if you have made an error and he has plagued your house or you in your house. So uh, it's not something that you don't have to fast. Uh, the day of atonement, you do have to fast specifically. Uh, but other than the day of atonement, uh, on the Sabbath day, you do not have to, but you can. And I do suggest that people uh, fast and do it at least once a month. Uh, that way, when the Day of Atonement does come around, it, your body's used to doing it. Uh, and sometimes it's a good way for you to kind of cleanse your body as well and give that operational system that has to digest your food and all of that. Uh, when, you, when you do fast, it gives your body a chance to rest from doing all its normal functions. I mean, I would say it would be a day of, of atonement. Can, can you hear me? Say that again. Uh, how many days, you know, you said the day of atonement. How many days would that be? Or is it, does it change? One day. One day. Uh, yeah, um, I would say uh, also that, um, yeah, I, I started off fasting on, on the Sabbath. Um, but I read into it a bit more and I realized that, um, you know, the, the most high basic commands, if you, if you're going to, you know, make food, right, do it on the day before. Correct. And prepare. He would right. say to gather, you know, when they were in the wilderness, they would gather two, you know, two days worth of manna um, to lay up for the Sabbath. So, yes, they were eating. And um, there, was, uh, there is also a passage that says about uh, feasting during the Sabbath. But I don't think it's a hard and fast rule whether you feast or 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 or, or fast. So yeah. Something I just wanted to say really quickly, brothers, is uh, you know, upon looking back at it, the salesman that spoke to me, his name was actually Cyrus. And upon reading the book of remembrance, I came to know who King Cyrus is or was rather, a Babylonian king that allowed the Israelites to return to rebuild the temple. And I just found that a to be a fascinating coincidence so to speak that someone who put me on um on a path of truth used by y'all of course was uh you know a namesake of a babylonian king that essentially allowed our people to return to israel and continue to worship y'all and the reason why i believe the flat earth is so important is because they say uh people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and it's, it's fascinating because once we have a true or a truer understanding of what the earth is, then a lot of things go right out the window. There's no Big Bang Theory anymore. Atheists can't stand on any solid ground claiming that, you know, there's an explosion that caused this and that. Um, but all of a sudden, our universe becomes a lot more, it becomes a lot smaller. And th there can only be one explanation, and that is that we are indeed created. So from that point, it's, okay, who is the creator? And I'm just saying this to our brothers and sisters who may be watching, and, you know, I know some of them tend to experiment with different religions and see which way is the path and this and that. So the point, what even makes you look into a supernatural explanation of things is understanding the only reason why we can be here in the first place is through creation. And what makes that evident to people is knowing that indeed the earth is leveled and there is no cosmological perspective as propagated by mainstream science to explain their nonsensical um, postulations. It's just what Yah has put forth. And the Book of Remembrance actually mirrors a clear image of a reality that we can experience. And I feel as though from that point, once people get gain that understanding, then they indeed begin to see the truth, yeah. or at least we would hope a lot more of them. I, uh, David, you were saying it's like um, the earth is widening. When, when you listen to the story of Admiral Byrd, you were saying that the, when he got to the wall, past the wall, he got to the dome, he said the, the, it was the biggest, it was biggest of North, North America. Yeah, just saying that there's more continents outside um, beyond the Earth that we know. Um, for for me though, the, the flat Earth isn't um, isn't the be all and end all of this. Yeah, when I was when I was researching it, uh, I called my first video the biggest lie of all. But while I was researching, I I I, I think I mentioned in the video that 
um, I found an even bigger lie. And that lie was about us and, and the truth of the Old Testament. Yeah, that is the biggest lie of all, I believe. Uh, that is the, the biggest secret that uh, should never get out. Yeah, but it's out now because, again, it's like a balloon being held underwater. You can't keep it down forever. And, and this, is, this is the time that that book is referencing, you know, this moment in history. You know, the whole of the uh, Old Testament is, is geared to talking about this moment in history. Yeah? Um, again, forgive the car if you can hear it, if you, it's really noisy. Um, it's fine, Dave. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is this moment. I mean, this is where, um, uh, like the Book of Enoch, I know, I know you're not into that, Lee, but the Book of Enoch says, this book isn't for now. This is for the generations to come. Yeah. It's, again, for this time. This is why it's called the Book of Remembrance, because of this time when, you know, the most highest people would not remember who they are and they'd need something. Um, and my big revelation came realizing that, uh, you know, that this, this book has been with mankind in one form or another for the whole of human history, just sitting there, um, you know, waiting to be decoded. Right? And it's, you know, as, as uh, I think it says in Daniel, you know, shut up the book until the end. Yeah. Well, that book has sat there um, being unable to be decoded until now. <laughs> you know, it's it's not an accident. You know, it says in a time when knowledge is increased. Well, you know, this is the, the time in this history where um, the whole of human um, knowledge is is at everyone's fingertips. So knowledge is certainly increased here. You know, so um, so I, I've been an atheist. I was an atheist for 40 years. OK, I didn't want anything to do with uh, religion or Bibles or anything. I had no religious training never went to school, uh, Sunday school, or I uh, never, never went to church. So um, I came at this fresh. Um, I read the book three times through, cover to cover, and realized that it was a, a story. It was a real story that I could follow up until you hit the New Testament. And then it all went, uh, it said, forget that story. Forget that 4,000 years of history. It's all about this now and this character and and yeah this character was there at the beginning uh, where, when he clearly wasn't yeah so um i decided to research the old testament and uh the, the whole world opened up to me um prior to that i was completely in the matrix yeah i, I was you know um chasing money and uh, i was materialist and you know i was trying to get the bigger house the faster car and all that sort of thing um and then a couple of things converged you know my midlife crisis when i started asking what the hell am i doing why why is the world like this um happened um at the same time as 9 11 happened um and it just started launching me on a, a quest for searching for the truth and i believe now that that search for truth was actually a search for the face of the most high um because Everything I was finding was destroying the illusions that I'd been under about this society. You know, I, I thought that uh, chasing money was, uh, was a worthy cause. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, I thought, you know, that, uh, the, you know, the things that were shown to me on television were, were good and righteous and everything, you know, and all for our benefit. They're not. Nothing in this society is for our benefit. And, and literally my, my journey has been, you know, destroying all these things that I thought were, were real and, and were worthwhile until what, all that was left was the most high. So, um, so yes, I'm, that's, that's my journey, essentially. Okay. It's like um, everybody's searching for something. It's like when I was a child and I went to uh, Sunday school and I, I didn't even know why I was going there. Then they said, oh, it's about this guy on the wall, this JC. And I say to my mom, I'm, I'm not going to worship no man. I said, he's, he's a man, he's dead like me. So he didn't make sense. Then when you get older, then people introduce you to Islam. So you get into Islam, then you're thinking, you're looking at it, you're questioning so many different things. Because we're searching 
because we don't because we don't know where we was from. So we always search, and then I went through Islam, gone to the mosque, saying the prayers and different things. They said, "Nah, this is not for me." Then you then you find like a book of remembrance, and you look into that. Then you listen to people like Dave and Lee. Then you realize that this is what fits the truth for yourself. That's for me. Brother Lee, can you give us a take on just how, because you, you've been at it for a while now, you know, just what was your initial, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm talking years, like five years I've watched your videos. I know even longer than that. Please go ahead. Yeah, la look, uh, you know, I've always been a pretty disciplined person. Uh, as Brother Benayah knows, I'm a martial arts instructor. Uh, so I've had a form of discipline. And I do feel that that really led a, that led me on the path to where I am now. Uh, my search began. Now, I've lived in many different places, uh, traveled to many different places. And I got to the point in my life where I asked myself, why is it all of these just different places that I've lived and I've been, why is it that I see my people struggling in the same fashion? That was the start of it all. Why is it from South America to Central America to Africa to America, why is it that I'm seeing quote unquote black people in the same struggle, speaking different languages, but no matter where I went to, I saw our people being mistreated, poor, confused, and really not having any answers. So I started asking brothers that I, that I knew, I said, why do you think that we are in this same predicament no matter where we go? And the answer that they had was, I don't know. And so I started searching, started digging, looked on YouTube, because YouTube has a, is a great source of information. So I'm seeing some brothers on there. Uh, first was the UIC, UIC, Israel United in the Idol. And I'm seeing these brothers on there, young brothers, spitting all of this knowledge. So I'm looking, I'm listening, I'm learning. And while hearing all of this, I decided I'm going to go read this book. And I started off where most people would start off, in the front. And I've already had some knowledge of the New Testament because I'm listening to them. And then I decided to go in the front. And then when I'm reading the front, I'm seeing things that I saw in the back. However, it was different in the back. It was just pieces that they pulled from the front. And so I started analyzing. I started scrutinizing it start looking looking at different videos and start seeing that this doesn't add up. Came across the brother out of Cincinnati. Uh, and then I came across brother Ben Ayuda, Ben, ben Israel out of uh, Yah of Righteousness. And so what he's saying makes sense. What I'm seeing re makes sense. And so I'm reading for myself now I'm putting it together. And to be honest with you, this is something that I had absolutely no control of. What I mean of, what I mean by that is this. It was never my intent to teach the most highest word. It was never my intent to be a preacher, a pastor, a layman, and any of these things. Once I had, the most I had allowed me to see this information and to understand it, then it was imperative that I teach this. Our people must know this. Our people must hear this, even if they disagree. So me not being the best orator, not being the best reader, not being the best person to stand up in front of people and to teach, I somehow started to do this. And there was nothing that I could do to say, I don't want to do it. It was just something that I was made to do and had absolutely no control over it. And when I look at the videos and I listen to it and I go over some of them, 
I'm amazed still with the knowledge that the Most High has given me and have allowed me to see and to express it and explain it in a manner that it can be received by our people. Uh, what I have been allowed to see and been, been blessed is that those videos, when I started making them, there was no one at the channel. And now there are many people that are saying how the videos have helped them. So it's proof positive to me that the Most High has made it plain that his words will not return unto him void. Uh, and so it has been a great journey for me, but it has helped so many people and their families also. Uh, and my journey, I'm still on it. It is a life's journey. It is not something you stop. Uh, and I will continue to do this as far as being a help to our people when it comes to deciphering this word, reading it and walking in it. And the best way to teach is to teach by example. A lot of our people are not willing to step forward and teach. We must. We're seeing this wickedness in the earth. We may complain about how wicked our enemies are. We may complain of how wicked our fellow Israelites are. But we cannot do that, have this knowledge, and not step forth and say, brother, you're wicked. Here's, this, here's the light. Here's the law. This is where you're incorrect. And so we cannot complain about the wickedness that we see if we're not willing to step forward and teach. Uh, and to teach is to care because I refuse to know what I have been allowed to see and to sit back and watch my people walk off a cliff. It, I can't do it. And so therefore that was my first push to say, if I can see this, I wonder who else can see this. And those who are not able to see this they need to at least hear it that they may make a decision for themselves. And, and, and that is what thrusted me into uh, to teaching, into putting forth my channel. And I can say I've looked on YouTube and there are many Israelites on YouTube. I'm very big on when we address our people that at no time, the Most High is not a party to wickedness. The Most High is not a party to vulgarities. So when I'm speaking, I'm addressing our people you know, you cannot come out of your mouth vulgar to the most highest people and you cannot walk with the most high and be vulgar in your language. So it's very important when we address our people that we do it in a respectful and a righteous manner. Uh, and I'm very pleased that when I type up his Hebrew Israelite on YouTube, there's many of the brothers on the street that's professing black JC cussing and acting uncivilized. And my video is nowhere in the mix of those Israelites who are doing those sorts of things. To find slapping you with the truth channel, you have to be specifically looking for that. You cannot just type in uh, black Hebrew Israelites or Hebrew Israelites and that video will show up nowhere. I've searched many times. So those who actually come to my channel, somehow, I don't know how they find it, I can only say that it's by the spirit of the most high that they are led to it or it has led to them one or two. But uh, my journey has been amazing. I'm the best me that I've ever been because of this journey. And by putting myself in a public forum, I know good and well that, you know, people are looking. They want to see exactly, are you going to do what you say? Or are you living what you say? And so therefore, when you step out like that, and many of our men will not step out and teach these people, may criticize them and do all the other things, but refuse to teach. I don't want to be a teacher of these people. And one of the reasons for that is many of our men want to be on both sides of the fence. They want to do a little righteousness here, do a little wickedness there. But when you decide to step up and teach, then everyone is looking at you. You have to walk the straight line. And many are not committed to do so. I have made that commitment to walk in the most high's law. I have made that commitment to teach his people and to teach my people and to care for them. And it's been the best decision that I have made in my entire life. And I, I, I can only see this strengthening going forward. All praise the most high. All praise the most high. Brother Delvin, you want to go? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, my story is quite a long one. I'm going to try and narrow it down quite quickly. Um, 
when I first knew things were wrong was when I was very, very young, very similar to um, Henry going to church. Um, it didn't feel right. Certain things didn't feel right. And um, one thing I always said was, if we are looking at JC, what's the point of the Most High? What is the point of the Most High? If he's brought forth now this new covenant, what's wrong with the old one? You know, so I was asking these questions and I wasn't getting many answers. So that, along with me deciphering that we're living on a flat plane, those two things kind of like spurred me to look into UFOs and space and different galaxies and all that kind of stuff. And so in doing so, you know, um, when, when the Most High knows you're looking, when the Most High knows you're searching for the truth, he will guide you. He will guide you. And he'll guide you in some places which you feel are completely wrong. But then if you pursue it, he'll put you right on the right track every time. You know, and I'm a, a big believer in that. And I'm even on this talk now, coming here now, um, everything what we're putting to this conversation, to this meeting, it means something. It's down to the individual what it takes away from it. So when I was trying to, um, trying to find the truth in my life, um, I've, I found out once that um, when you strike a tennis ball with a tennis racket and the ball is wet, the water flies off the ball, okay? And I had this conversation with my dad and I was about five or six years old. And then um, my dad said to me, you know, if the ball, the water flies off the ball, off the tennis ball, surely if we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, surely the water should fly off the actual um, ball, yeah? So I said, yes, dad, I've always thought that, but at school they teach us about the ball earth and da, da, da. And then he said, well, if they teach that at school, then it's the truth. It never worked with me, it never worked with me. So many, many years went by where I was looking to UFOs and space and so on and so forth. And nothing really added up. But then when it got down to about, say, five, six, maybe about eight years ago, about eight years ago, um, I was looking deeper into things because things weren't adding up. And I was married. It cost me my marriage. It cost me um, a lot of things. What it didn't cost me was my faith in the Most High. That grew. That grew. And uh, cutting a a long story short, that made me look for more um, truth on YouTube. And I saw a bald black guy um, talking about the earth being flat. And uh, there's no such thing as space. And there's no such thing as JC. But the KJV was a flat earth book. That gentleman is Dave right there. And uh, <laughs> it's your fault, man. It's your fault. Anyway, so... <laughs> so when I saw a black man, because there's no, there's zero black truthers at the time when I was looking. That's why I was very, um, what's the word? I was troubled by there was no black truthers. I was troubled by that because I was thinking, am I the only one? And um, I saw many, many videos. I'm not going to elaborate on them too much, but what I will say, some of the videos I saw was basically teaching me the world I'm living in is hiding the most high. It's hiding that we live on a flat plane. And it's hiding the fact, the fact that a lot of our black evangelists and preachers were talking BS. But our people are so indoctrinated in these people, you know, you know, I, I don't want to go too deep into this, but people like Martin Luther King and um, other men who was talking truth, when I found out who they belonged to and who they really represented, I was very annoyed to say the least. So when you find about, when you know about the boule and um, a lot of the, act, the actors in America, what they have to do to become stars or idols, if you like, none of it rested with me when I was on my pursuit of the truth. I had to drop a lot of people. So when I saw Dave talking about the earth being flat, um, I had to find Dave basically i had to find him and um the most i led me to dave and it led me to a few other places as well okay and um it did take me to the land and i met a few people in the land as well of israel and um i know now that now is not the time to go to israel it's not the time the most high when you read ezekiel jeremiah um hosea 
a lot of the minor prophets, they tell you what the Most High will do at this time. And I'm a big, I'm a strong also believer that the truth of Enoch is very true. It's a very harrowing book. If anybody takes the time out to read the book of Enoch, there's three of them. Um, I've read all of them. Um, it's, a, it's a harrowing read. And um, it talks of this time when we're in right now and what's going to happen. And I've read Ezra, Ezra 2, Second Ezra. Um, and I've read a lot of books. And a lot of them tie in the book of Jubilees, book of Jasher, the Old Testament. I read a lot of things and because I was searching on my own. But they've helped me a lot. And the guys I met who was in the land, they helped me a lot as well. And uh, they are now on their own journey where they are and what they do. And I'm on my journey now. And um, I think this time now is the age right now of disclosure. And I'm finding out more nowadays because there was a lull. I don't know if you agree with this, Dave, but there was a time where truth ceased to come out. In the pursuit of the Most High, I found there was about, about two years ago, just before um, all this corona crap happened, okay, there was a lack of knowledge coming out from the truth community. And uh, that lack of knowledge didn't stop me, but it made me look deeper into myself. And now in doing so, more knowledge now is coming out, more so now than almost ever before. That tells me we're coming towards the end, whereby the Most High at some point is going to speak to his, his people and they will find out the truth and people like us have to help enlighten others to lead them on the right track. So my journey has been a very, very long one. That's a narrowed down version, very narrowed down. And maybe if we have, if we have more talks, we can talk more in depth about certain situations in our lives. But in, but in my time now, um, in meeting Dave and a few other people, and you, Lee, as well, because um, Henry introduced you, Lee, to me, you, Lee, to me, yeah? And um, you and Dave spoke very similar. And that was very interesting to me because instead of me just on one black brother speaking about the truth in its entirety, there was two. But I think Dave's um, vast amount of knowledge helped me a lot because I was looking at a lot of things, not just the, uh, the Book of Remembrance, a lot of other things as well. And it all led back to the Most High, all of it. And it still is, you know. And um, so in speaking now on this talk here now, I know I'm on the right track, but I'll be honest with you, I'm repenting every day. My biggest advice is to everybody, speak to the Most High. Let him hear your testimony. He knows it, but tell him it and be real because he knows anyway. And stay strong to yourself and in the pursuit of him and the laws and statutes that he's given us to follow. He knows where we are now. It's very difficult for us, especially within, with the current climate, on holding on to every single law. But he knows your pursuit as well. And so with me, I know he knows my pursuit and um, I'm going to do my best to hold up as many of those laws as I can and hopefully help other brothers as much as I can as well. So that's kind of like my story narrowed down. And I hope, it's, I, hope I can help other brothers find their pathway to the Most High as well. That's the truth. All praise the Most High. Ooh, Brother Kwame. Awesome. Yeah, he's a yeah okay story okay um I, i've known henry for a long time i've known henry for a very long time and um henry knows that i've always been a person who uh um i'm in the pursuit of truth always the pursuit of truth reality i would want to know what reality is and i've always pushed myself in down those roads um, i spent a lot of time in india meeting lots of gurus the Indians uh, and, and um, meeting them, sitting down with them, talking with them, just just want to get an understanding of who they were and uh, if they, they knew truth, you know. Um, I started that when I was around 19 years old, going around, um, sorry, prior to that, I used to go to a bookshop in, in London called Head Start and um, they, they're part of the sort of commission community 
And they said, they said to me when I was 19, go and travel and have a look around the world. Look at the, you know, because it, there was a book called What They Never Told You in History Class, and it was incredible, an incredible book. And it showed you about the Buddha, that he was black. And I don't know if you, anybody's, anybody here has actually read that book, but it was quite interesting. It just broke down all of the lies, what were going on. And, uh, it, and, and really uh, talking about black people and their achievements. So I spent uh, some years going around uh, Asia um, I eventually came back here to this country and um, to the UK and, you know, still in the pursuit of truth. Didn't ever think that I, that I was there with that. And um, then I went down the line of Ifa, Ifa, and um, I was initiated into Ifa as a first level priest of Shongo. Mm. Um, so I went through that. I went through that. And then... Um, it just, you know, I spent some some time there, and then uh, my the Baba Lao's who are around. I then uh, was initiated as a Baba Lao in the tradition of Ifa. And Brother Kwame, can you can you look into the camera when you're speaking because you're kind of staring off into space a little bit? Oh, I know because I my my camera's a bit like this. You see, it's leaning. You see, okay. I've, I've got a I've got a. It's plugged into the. It's plugged into the uh, electric, so it's hard for me to look. You see? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's why I cut off. So it's in a bit of a strange uh, position. Any, yeah. So, so basically, I was as a priest of, um, I was a Baba Lawu, and I spent some time there. And uh, you know, it just, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't right. I didn't feel right with what I was doing. And it, when I went through my initiations uh, to become a Baba Lawu, as I went through it. Um, there as part of the there's certain initiations they do it actually uh, wasn't going to allow me through the door part of that wasn't going to allow me through the door to become a Baba Lao. but whatever they did it happened and um you know i was with that for some time but i didn't feel i wasn't happy with um you know it felt like i was tending uh, what I was doing it didn't feel real what I was doing it felt like I was pretending when I was divining and all of these things it just didn't feel feel right so I just continued the, the pursuit and um, a lot of people said if you leave this is going to happen to you that's going to happen to you all, all sorts of things but the type of person I am I just I just carried on carried on in the in the uh, moving forward and just like some of the other brothers here a uh, flat earth opened up the whole flat earth Thing happened and um, that was quite amazing and uh, it just kind of it changed my perspective on a lot of things even more so and uh, you know even in the community of Baba Laos and people I, I, I was dealing with and man uh, none of them were really they weren't really um, they weren't interested in any of those type of things anyway and uh, I started delving more into where I used to talk to my friends about it and everyone thought I was mad but I knew it was real it was something I actually knew at that point this is real this is really real it wasn't there was no sort of uh, confusion and through that um, you know I, I started watching you know it's, it's strange isn't it you, I, I was going through that um, I saw Dave started looking at um, Dave's videos and and actually it's quite interesting I I, I, I followed the move um, how Dave was moving because as, as others have said there wasn't there wasn't anybody who was talking truth black who was talking truth or, or of any kind and, that, and that's been like that for many years I mean you, you've got people like um, Farrah Khan and a lot of them a lot of black Americans who who have the truth who have the truth but it wasn't anybody in this country, in the UK. So um, Dave, Dave opened my eyes to the flat earth. But then, um, curiously, uh, when I, I saw Dave was getting into the Israelite type um, movement or, or just, just sort of questioning things, um, I was moving in that same direction. I don't know how that was, how that was aligning. And um, I started to talk to... Uh, Henry and other brothers and said, do you know who we are? Do you know who we are? 
and and that's that's that was the start of it. I started accumulating the books, the book of Jasha, the book of um, you know, started reading, started researching, doing that even more, so putting more time and effort into it and getting a great um understanding that it was real. And I remember when I was a boy, and uh, you see my name says Kwame Okoji. My name is Sean Tracy. That's my name. That's actually my, my birth name. Um, because I was going through, uh, as I said, I went into Ifa and I was always on a search. And it was Africa was the search at, mm -hmm. at, at a point in time. But my father used to always say to me, look in Ireland. He, he said, why are you going to Africa? But I didn't understand that. However, subsequently in time, I mean, that's all come out about, uh, as Dave has mentioned um, previously, about the sons of Isaac and, and how the Israelites ended up in Ireland, the black Israelites, and how they were then taken from Ireland to Jamaica and the Caribbean islands, and not so much from where a lot of people saw the transatlantic slave trade. They thought a lot of the people were coming from Africa, which wasn't so in Jamaica and some of the other countries. And, and, that, and that's really it, to be, to be quite, that, that's, that's it, being honest. That's how uh, I am where I am now. And um, the search continues. And, uh, and when I say the search continues, it's, I'm always asking questions. Like, for instance, I asked today about Sabbath. I wanted to know, I'm, I'm very curious as, how is it um, we know that we're supposed to do certain things. Yes, there's certain things within the Book of Remembrance. I, 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 I get that with in Leviticus and, with commandments but then there's other things uh, for instance uh, I, I'm just tangenting just slightly and I'm, I'm, then I'm going to stop it's like for it, I, birthdays I mean is that sinful to celebrate birthdays so there's so many things which I'm still working with within myself and I don't feel that the journey is complete I still feel it's part we're still part for myself I'm still part of that journey I recognize that I'm an Israelite and, and I say Israelite for myself rather than I say Hebrew Israelite. And the reason I, the reason I say that is because I believe there, there are many Hebrews, but not all are Israelites. Um, yeah, that's me, really. That's where I am.